Hello, everyone, and welcome back. I know we have been waiting for this one for a long time, so we're going to do a hand filing one. Uh, I'm actually not working on 15. It's actually 14 today. 15 is still somehow totally fine, but 14, I thought this was a good one. A little bit of calcification there, definitely infected, and that's what it looks like from the coronal aspect. So let's go ahead and start off like we always do by taking the tooth out of the bite. This one will end up in a crown, so may as well remove all those interferences. If you've watched any of my recent lectures to the residents, you know how important this is to get those out of there. And this is one one thing I haven't actually mentioned to them, but I'll mention to you all right now. I like to do this on all of my cases where I know it's going to have a crown. Just make the tooth flat. Give it implant occlusion from the beginning because you're going to have far less issues with post-operative pain. It's one of the best things you can do here. So now we're going to go ahead and remove that existing composite. You'll notice I'm using the bigger diamond here. So I'm going to do the prep burr just because it's a little more efficient in removing the larger chunks of composite. I will switch back to the infamous workhorse. I'm, I'm getting better at saying it, you guys, even with the dumb thing in my mouth. And <laughs> uh, to access the tooth, that's what we'll do to keep everything nice and conservative here. So I know we've talked a little bit in the past about my hand filing approach. And in general, it's going to be I want to do as little as possible. And I think what happens with a lot of residency programs is there's this dogma created by these great minds who for sure have moved our specialty very far forward. But if you've watched any of my videos, you know I am far more a proponent of teaching principles and why and letting the individual doctor determine what is the best way to do it. So said another way. There's a big difference, difference between necessary and sufficient. And I think one thing we can all admit in endodontics is that, A, we love taking pictures of pulp stones, but <laughs> more importantly, it's that we don't really know what is necessary nor sufficient. And that is an uncomfortable feeling. So let's talk about the hand filing process there. There we go. That's an 8C. You're going to get that cleaned out. Um, drop it down about halfway. You can see I got MB. I got MB two, not really, a distal buckle looked good and palatal was a no-go there. So that was my hand filing. That's it. Psych! That's the wrong number! Oh! That's all that I do for hand filing on the vast, vast, vast majority of cases. I will find one where I actually need to use multiple hand files, but that's it. I, I understand that for a lot of people, they want to do what their directors told them. Claire, and you're afraid that that director is going to find you and hunt you down if you don't take pre-dent hand files from 6, 8, 10, 12, 15, 20, 25 to working length before you touch a rotary. The reason they teach you that is because it is an important skill to learn how to hand file. But I will argue very vehemently I said that word very poorly. I'm sorry. Okay, so that, that one was impacted by the thing in the roof of my mouth. The palatal expander did not like vehemently. I'm, I'm, I'm still messing that one up. Anyway, I will argue very strongly That's all, that you do not need to take those hand files down every single time in every single case to get success because it's just not necessary. It may be a great thing and you may feel wonderful about it, but is it really necessary? And are you doing it for yourself or are you doing it for the patient? And that gives us, oh, there's some more hand filing. There we go. That's that's about it. You're dropping down. Really, I'm just poking here to try to see if I can get into an MB2. Um, and I could get a little stick. And the next thing I do is pick up a rotary file. So this is a facetious video and this is a facetious title. Um, <laughs> so I promise I will do it when I find an actual case where I have to do a bunch of hand filing, I'll, I'll make sure to hit record on it. But I think it's important that you all take away that we don't need to do this in every single case. I have seen some beautiful work out there on Instagram where people are taking pre-dent hand files and finding these cool laterals and doing all this extra stuff. And that's wonderful. I love seeing clinicians can that can really excel in what they do. But are they doing it for the patient or are they doing it for the gram? Or are they doing it for themselves? Said another way, there's a big difference between patient-centered outcomes and doctor-centered outcomes and process-centered outcomes. And I've gone over this with my residents, but just to remind you, process-centered outcomes are things like 
if you take it to a 35, you will have success. Well, I can do, show you plenty of retreats where they took it to a 35 and they did not have success, oftentimes because the tooth cracked. They were using a process-centered outcome and ne neglected the patient-centered outcome. Then you have the doctor-centered outcome. And that's things like, does the x-ray look pretty? Did we get a sealer puff? Did we not get a sealer puff? Did we get to length? Are we short? Are we long? Those are things that have been shown somewhat to make a difference long term, especially with the length determination things. But does it really matter in every single case? And I don't know if anyone can confidently say yes, if they're actually stepping back and thinking about it from a reasonable perspective. And then there's the patient centered outcome. And that's what I like to do. You've seen me talk a little bit here about how if you've watched any of the lectures to the residents, that one of the missions of my office is to redefine endodontics. And what that means is we have a specialty where most people hate us. They don't really want to see us. <laughs> so not only is that bar low, I want to do everything I can to make it so that patients leave saying, wow, that was the best experience I've ever had. And one of the ways we do that is by being efficient. So that means I'm not taking a pre-dent hand file down every single canal multiple times and scraping all the walls. And it, some may say that makes me a less good endodontist. And that's okay. I don't need their approval. I'm happy that patients love me and at the end of the day say that was the best experience I've ever had. That, that is way more important to me than making a picture look pretty on Instagram. Okay. So learn hand filing for sure. If you're a resident in residency and you have one of those directors who demands that you do this, do it. It's a really good skill. And I still have to do some hand filing every now and then. But for the vast, vast, vast majority of cases, which this one I think a lot of people would say has a little bit of calcifications to it. I'll make sure to drop the x-ray right here so you guys can kind of see and you can judge. You know, is this enough? I, I think so. We were able to get patent. We were able to clean everything out. We have a pretty looking x-ray that I could post on Instagram and make people feel happy. The patient left feeling great because the whole case, this is a, another one where I haven't made any cuts. The whole case is like 17, 18 minutes. And so they were very happy to get their tooth feeling better in efficient matter. I kept everything nice and small so that the tooth is strong. In this case, I didn't restore because this dentist um, prefers me not to, but still, it's a good example of thinking about things in a different way. Now, I know what all of you are asking is, well, how do I do it? How do I do it? And I think that's the really tough part for a lot of younger doctors, because you're all wanting to know how. That's what we all love talking about. Like, how do you do that? What file system do you use? What, what obturation system do you use? What sealant do you use? And what is really important is that doesn't matter. <laughs> You'll figure it out. If you know what your purpose is in doing the root canal, what, have the end in mind, and you, as a doctor who uses your big brain, can figure out the best way to do these things. You can do it. I, I can give you all the tools that I need. And I'll, I, I should probably actually just make a website where I give you every little thing that I use. And I guarantee your root canals aren't going to look the same as mine because you're not me. And that's not a bad thing. That's just because we're humans. We're different in how we work. And it's far more important to think about these big global principles, but they hurt people's brains. <laughs> and that's why we don't do it. <laughs> if you've ever read the Kahneman book, Thinking Fast and Slow, this is what it's about. Everybody wants a recipe. First do this with a root canal, then you do this, and then you then you obturate it, and then you have success and joy and everything is easy. And we love it because it's easy. It makes us feel comfortable. But the reason we get paid so much to do something so weird is because, not because we're necessarily that great at doing the root canals. It's because we use our big brains and our experience to figure out what is the best treatment for each patient. So... I'll try to be posting a few more cases that are diagnostic challenges. I know I've been talking a lot about this with the residents. We're going to go through a bunch of those cases in the, it should be the end of this month. So end of September, I'm going to be going through those and talking about kind of how I view patients holistically. But that's more of the takeaway I want all of you to have from this video is, you know, there's your MB2. I took an 8C file down about two millimeters and that's it. The rest of the time, I'm using rotaries. And to get a little bit into the weeds of the why and how we're doing that, 
as a reminder, hand files, whether it's a headstrom, a K file, a C file, C plus, D batting finder, whatever you want, they compact debris. They are designed in that they push debris apically. Rotary files remove debris. They pull debris up because of their flute design. This is why I often see cases where general dentists have started it and they are taught to only do uh, hand filing because that's what we were all taught in dental school. They're often ledged to shit and it's really tough to get past that. <laughs> now, I'm not going to be the one out there telling general dentist, oh, just jump straight to doing rotary files. Uh, that's, you know, you do have to have some experience behind it. But this is something I want you all to think about. You don't need to take a rotor, uh, hand file down in every single case. Sometimes, especially, in, in, and that's probably a case where I would have to do a lot of hand filing, is to fix the work that's already been done. When it's ledged, the only real way to get around it is lots of, uh, lots of EDTA, lots of hand filing, pre-bent, get around the corner and find a way around it, and then use rotaries as soon as you drop down. So it's not one of those things where you need to hand file in every case. I hope that is the main takeaway that you all have from this video. <laughs> and once again, I'm sorry for being cheeky and posting something about hand filing when it's really not. So hopefully you're all still watching at this point. If you are, please drop a comment so I know that you're all here. Um, I, I do respond to all the comments. If you have any questions, I promise I won't make fun of you. If you ask me what I use, I, I, I've always been good about it. But the hopefully the takeaway, if you've been watching this channel for a while, which has it's been around a year and a half, I mean, my goal of doing this in the first place was actually just to show videos on answering questions that my residents had because other people would have those same questions and I'm only one person and I'd rather be home with my kids. So I just figure if you guys have, if someone else has those questions, uh, I can just record it and send it off when someone else does in the future. Um, <laughs> but I'm hoping that this isn't just entertainment for all of you. I'm hoping that you take something away and you learn and you can take these skills and transfer them and be better. Um, one thing there, just a quick note, there is a little bit of discoloration at the end um, of those paper points. However, I was able to get it all the way dry. Uh, and that's really my determinant for whether or not I'm going to obturate a case is whether or not I can get it all the way dry. So here we are about what, 12 minutes in. Um, and you can see looks nice and clean. We have all four canals shaped up. And so we're going to obturate it now. And so far I've used two hand files. I've used an 8C to get the initial, just make sure we have a stick, we're in the right spot. And I've used a 25 length 10K file to get my working length, because this case was one where um, I didn't use the gentle wave. So I do take it all the way to the apex if I'm not using the gentle wave in those cases. And that's it. And really, that's it for most of the time. And then I do also use this 20K file um, just to make sure I recapitulate and that we're down to the apex. I will sometimes do a little bit of watch winding, which is just the back and forth motion. And that's what you're seeing there where my hand covers it up. It truly is just back and forth about, let's say, 90 degrees. And just make sure you have a clear path. And that's it. So three hand files, two rotary files for the whole case. And this is good for many different things. It is good for your pocketbook because you only use three really cheap hand files and actually C files are kind of expensive and two rotary files. And I guess I also have to use the PacMac, which is surprisingly the most expensive one that I have. <laughs> it's good for the patient in that their time spent in the chair being worked on is 20 minutes, not two hours. It's good for the referring doctor in that they still have a ton of tooth structure left to work with. And if you ask any general dentist, what's the, one of the biggest complaints they have about endo, it's huge access sizes. They want to have more tooth structure. The more tooth structure you can give a general dentist to work with, the happier they're going to be. And more importantly for the patient side, the better the crown is going to be and the longer the tooth is going to last. And then that's the final thing. By keeping the shapes as small and conservative as possible, we are retaining as much tooth structure in the root, which is where we often see those vertical root fractures propagate from, and it's from overshaping. And the reason I think we did a lot of overshaping was both dogma and also to make x-rays look pretty because everyone likes a big, thick, you know, 
obturation. <laughs> fill, fill, fill in the blank of where my brain was going from there, but I do want to still keep my uh, monetization. Half these de demonetized anyway. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, for all this, you think I'm making a lot of money off of YouTube. I have made zero uh, dollars so far. Yep. <laughs> this is not, I do this because I care about each and every one of you and I want to help make Endo as good, everybody out there as good as they possibly can be at this. Um, and I also like buying fun things like cameras and microphones. So that's the other reason why. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, hopefully I haven't, you know, beaten the horse to death here. But, you know, your residency director, the people who taught you, if they truly are educators who care about you, they're not going to be upset if you do something that's slightly outside of what they told you. I guarantee I did not do exactly as Hatton taught me. But that is because he told me from day one, if you haven't seen that quote, it's one of my very favorite ones. You've spent the last four years learning what to learn. I have two years to teach you how to learn. And I think for a lot of people, they like the comfort of knowing what to do. They, 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 that, that for so many of us, I think we have imposter syndrome and we don't talk about it. And I 1000% do, but that's between me and my therapist. <laughs> but I actually want to make it clear. It, I think I'm not a very good endodontist. I, I get upset all the time. I, I hate most of the cases that I post. Um, and you, you guys only get to see the ones that I very much love. And it's, um, it, this is not an easy profession to go into because we take everything so far under the microscope. So that all being said, hopefully this was a good video for you all, if you have questions for me, please drop them below. Um, I know I got a little preachy there, but this stuff is way more important than the how to do it. It's, it's far more important. You think about the patient, you think about the general dentist, you think about everybody else, and then pick the tools that let you do what you need to do. I mean, I have a full huge set of rotary files and hand files, and I'll pull them out every now and then for different things. But most of the time, keeping it simple is good for everybody. It's good for you, it's good for the patient, it's good for the general dentist. And that's the main takeaway. Actually, there's about 30 different takeaways. This has become a very rambly one. <laughs> I, I have had coffee. Um, I'm recording this in the morning. So this is still, I think my second cup has not kicked in. That's the problem. So I had a patient fall out. So I decided to quick do this one. But uh, where was I? If you guys are also watching at this point, I, I'm just I'm just impressed. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think this is the the yeah the the one thing I want to say is you know you don't need to know how to take every case because it would take forever. You haven't had every experience. I I sometimes have to go. It's not just plan. A, B, and C, we, we go through the entire alphabet and all of a sudden I'm into numbers. And that's something I will talk about with the residents here soon. So stay tuned for that one. But the, you all are very smart and intelligent. Just use your big brains. You can figure this out. I promise. <laughs> so that was it as far as the case. This is what that final x-ray look, or final image looks like here. So you can see we got all four um, looking good there as far as finding our B2s. There's the final PA. Love the split on there. No need to get into there with a hand file because we can do it. So once again, we used a 8, a 10, and a 20. And I know some of you like to see the time. Access took about seven minutes because that MB2 was a little bit hard and obturation was a little bit long on this one as well. So thank you all so much for watching and I will talk to you all next time.